We're going to continue talking about the subject in the last lecture, uh, which was understanding the relationship and the results due to the piezoelectric D constant, which is not a vector, uh, the polarization, which is a vector, spontaneous polarization, more importantly for now, the electric field, uh, the polarization as its own term, uh, the applied electric field, uh, and the response of a material due to these two uh, through the piezoelectric D constant. So we explained uh, what is known as the uh, converse, or known as the uh, direct piezoelectric effect, where we apply a force. In this case, uh, we are, let's assume the spontaneous polarization is in this direction, up, and therefore we use our uh, coordinate system in the same direction. Uh, if we apply a stress, a tension stress, let's call the stress X, and we expect the negative charges to be the initially the source of the of the dielectric uh, dipole moment or the polarization, spontaneous polarization direction. So we expect the po negative go to the positive. And when we pull on it, the positive is going to go closer to the positive, the negative is going to go closer to the negative. Uh, therefore, we're going to induce uh, some charges. And the charges which are, we're going to introduce are negative here and positive here. And as a result uh, of this charge displacement, this extra charge displacement, we're going to induce an electric field going the opposite way. We're going to reduce this electric field going the opposite way. And this, all this relationship is known by uh, this equation. The polarization uh, is equal to the piezoelectric charge constant times the stress. Or multiplying by the area, we can get the, the charge times the piezoelectric D constant times the force. So it's important, uh, you know, if you ever get confused upon which way the electric field is going to be pointing, is you think about the converse piezoelectric effect, where we apply a force, where we apply a field, let's say this part's negative and this part's positive, and we define our, uh, we define our sp spontaneous polarization in the same direction, you know, we're going to get negative charges here because we're applying a negative potential and positive charges here because we're applying a positive potential. And what this is going to cause um, you know, this negative charge sitting at this end and this positive charge sitting at this end, it's going to cause um, a field which is, uh, per, uh, which is in line with the spontaneous polarization, which will make the material get bigger. This positive charge goes to the negative, this, this negative charge goes to the positive. But another way to think about this is consider again uh, the opposite case, where we have a negative electric field. So assume the po spontaneous polarization is that way. The, the electric field is negative, and for the electric field to be negative, there needs to be a positive here and a negative here, and therefore the material will get uh, will get smaller. And then the material in the first case where we had, um, you know, we pulled on the material in an opposite electric field came, opposite to the spontaneous polarization direction. In this second case where we have here, we have the electric field spontaneous polarization direction causing the material to get smaller. And see this electric field caused by the charges. You know, as I mentioned, you pulled on it, uh, we got charges. The electric field caused by these charges is going to want to resist this pulling motion. So we're getting an electric field opposite. You can know this as the inverse field. They're pulling on it, we're getting an electric field opposite due to these charges which are being developed. And this further adds to the difficulty on pulling the material. We can understand that if we had um, 
this configuration where we don't have a power supply hooked up, it's going to be more difficult to pull on it versus a situation where the power supply is hooked up. And I'll be speaking about that in the coming lecture. But you can understand that both charges are being developed and both you're stretching the material. So you're developing both electrical energy and mechanical energy. Therefore, the elastic compliance in this case is going to be stiffer. Which is lower, uh, and that's a point which we'll be getting into. But realize this is somewhat a an inverse field, which affects it. And the same thing if you were to squeeze this material, you would get positive charges here and negative charges here. And what does the squeezing want to do? And this 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 electric field induced by these charges is going uh, is going to want to increase the size of the material. Therefore, we can write such equations and uh, that I mentioned before the strain equals the D times the E uh, and you know we know we both know uh, that multiplying both sides by the height causes the equation to look like this and the same case where we have the stress with the polarization we get it to look like the charge but I, I want to take this a little step further, uh, these two equations. And understand first the definition of the polarization that is equal to the negative of the um, permittivity, I'll also the absolute permittivity, multiplied by the electric field. So the per polarization is opposite to the electric field. And this is how we can kind of justify, you know, when we are. Uh, when we are applying an electric field, when we are when we are when we are uh, compressing the material, or let's say stretching the material, we have a positive stress. So this is positive right here, and what we're getting is a negative electric field. We have positive charges developing here, negative charges developing here. Uh, we get a negative electric field. So. The reason we can establish this is because polarization is opposite to the electric field. So this ends up being positive as well. And uh, this material is an absolute quantity. Okay, thanks for listening. Next time, uh, we'll go over the material properties of piezoelectric materials. Now we have covered the piezoelectric D constant, or the charge constant, relating stress to polarization, or we can say electric field and charge, or strain, uh, which is related to the you know displacement from the voltage in the piezoelectric D constant, electromechanical coupling. Next time we'll see the effect of the compliance and the electric field, but first the, elect the mechan electromechanical coupling coefficient, which is known by K squared. Thanks for watching.